Hi everyone, uh, Dave here, Seasons Greetings and welcome to another episode of Legends of the Spire. Great to have you with us. Uh, as always, we are speaking to the former players and managers of Chesterfield Football Club and this is number 64 as I spoke to Calvin Plummer. Now, I wanted to speak to Calvin pretty much right from the start of doing Legends of the Spire, so I'm surprised it's taken me this long to get to him. Uh, a big thanks has to go to Paul Keller of the Former Players Association and a voluntary historian with the club uh, as he set me up with loads of these, so much thanks to Paul. Uh, Calvin had two spells with the Spireites after joining us from Nottingham Forest in the early 1980s. It's part of that whole swap deal between Danny Wilson that bought him and Steve Kendall uh, our way. I'll let him explain all of that. Had a good first spell with us and then went to clubs like Derby and Barnsley and then back to Forest before rejoining Chesterfield in the late 1980s uh, where he was part of that Chesterfield squad that got to the playoff final in 1990. In that run, he scored both a hat-trick and then another goal in that two-legged tie versus Stockport. So that's the thing that everyone wanted me to talk to him about, really. Uh, so we had a good chat about that. And then, yeah, the whole highlights uh, of his football career, really. So I hope you enjoy it. It's one I've wanted to record for ages, so finally uh, glad to finally get it done. I'll have one more episode of the podcast uh, before we break for Christmas, so look out for that next week. And there's also issue two of Linda's Sandwich Shop fanzine, which is out now. You can buy it on Etsy. I'll put the link in the uh, kind of the bio of this show. Uh, and then you can also buy it from Tallbird Records in the town centre as well. So please do grab a copy. But for now, here is interview number 64 of the former players and managers of Chesterfield Football Club as I speak to Calvin Plummer. Here we go. Hat-trick against Stockport is obviously oh. well-remembered. And for, oh. for a while, I was trying to... I've not got any associations with the club or anything. So for a while, I was, I've been tracking people down on social media and things like that. And funnily okay. enough, there's the, there's the guys on the, um, the brothers on Gogglebox called okay. the, Plumbers. the Plumbers. Yeah, Tristan and... and... Yeah, and, uh, a, and a couple of fans said to me, that's how you get to Calvin Plummer because uh, he's their dad. <laughs> so I got in touch Bloody with him hell. on Twitter and said, "Is no. Calvin Plummer your dad? You play for Chesterfield?" And they went, "No, <laughs> no. Oh God, don't put my miss. Don't tell my missus that, will you?" <laughs> so you're like Nottingham, born and bred. Is that right? Yeah. Yes, mate. Born and bred, Robin Hood all the way through, mate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I, I was at university in Nottingham many okay. years ago, um, good, good. so I know Nottingham well. So, mm -hmm. so which part of Nottingham were you grown up in? Well, I grew up um, in Highsome Green. Oh yeah, a place yeah. called Highsome Green. It's quite a what well, ghetto, whatever you want to call it. It was a bit of council estate. So, you know, that's all I knew really. Mm -hmm. Family and yeah, we had a great upbringing. You know, never got in any trouble with the police or anything like that. So. Just wanted to live my dream and be a pro footballer, mate. Because mm -hmm. we all used to just walk about with footballs and stuff and play football, any sport really. So um, I, I was quite small as well. I, I was always quick and nippy, and um, I just oh, I just lived the dream like everybody else, mate. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that was where my student house was on Heisen and Green. Heisen and Green, yeah, yeah. There's still lots of students there now, Lots so, of yeah, students yeah. in Heisen Green, isn't there? Yeah. So were yeah, you playing yeah. football at football in the street then, and amongst all the all the sort of sports then? Well, I used to live on. There was some flats, Heisen Green flats, they used to be called, and that was like a bit of an academy for footballers, as we would mm. say, because everybody had skills. This is fast. We did everything on there. Like we used to do um, sprints, you know, relays, and play cricket, baseball. Rounders, as it's called then, and football. Oh, it was just like sport mad. So we did everything. So I would say that's where I kind of got fell in love with football, really, and at a very young age. Mm. What time? What at what age did you start being involved with Nottingham Forest then? Um, well, I played for this team, the local team called Parkhead, Parkhead United. And there was two teams really in the Nottinghamshire area for young boys in that. There uh, was a, a team called Clifton All Whites and another team called Parkhead United, who were like the two top teams. And I was luckily picked for Parkhead um, from what, under eight upwards, right up to under 15s, until I started to become an um, apprentice. But 
They used to play in um, the same team as Steve Hodge. Nice. Me and yeah, Hodge yeah. come all the way up from under eights right up to, well, because we played, we were apprentices as well. Played in the same first team at Forest. So we come right the way through our fo- early footballing careers together. Um, but yeah, started from then. Um, Park Edge United, City Boys, you know, Nottingham City Boys, and then the county. Then you got spotted for different teams, you know, like Forest, Derby, Mansfield, all the lo- local teams. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but everybody wanted to go to Forest because they were the bigger team. Although, yeah. had a couple of trials and knots went to Derby for a trial, but I wasn't very big, mate, Dave. I was very small, but I was just quick. I was getting kicked all over the place, mate. <laughs> so, but, just, you know, just took it as that's how it was. So. But, yeah, yeah, it was good. Were you, were you always kind of, uh, you kind of tricky winger type yeah, then, so or were you all I was, over? Yeah, I always liked to, any skills, I used to be very brave and try stuff step overs and nutmegging people I, I didn't have no fear so I used to run at people and I used to like to make them look stupid but then you used to get kicked for missing. sins you know what I mean so you know it was just a case of enjoying it for me it wasn't about well, it wasn't a serious thing it was just yeah go on just have a go and, and that's what I was all about because I was very fast then I was little light as a feather Used to ride tackles and everything, but yeah, it just progressed from there, really. You, I suppose, you're the type of player that those those players that like to kick lumps out of people really oh. hate because you can wriggle away from them and just make yeah. me more <laughs> frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because I used to ride a lot of tackles. I could see him coming. We had to swing the legs, and I used to just float over them. As Cluffy once said to me, he says, "Oh, son, son, you're like a gazelle. In fact, <laughs> you're like a springbok." I'm like, "Oh, bloody hell!" I'm thinking, what's a springbok? I knew what a gazelle was, but well, a springbok, oh, right, okay, yeah, I know what they are now. So, yeah, I was always light and quick, nimble-footed and that. I just needed to strengthen up a bit and mm. put a bit of bulk on. So, yeah, yeah so that's how it started off, really. Yeah. So what was it like then getting a kind of a, a pro contract then? I, I suppose, oh. did, it, did it ever feel like you could actually become a, a pro? At what point did you start thinking, oh, what heck, I'm, could, oh. I could have a chance here? Um, well, it was when I was playing for City Boys because they used to have quite a few scouts used to come because we had quite a good uh, under, well, all the way from under 11s right up to under 15s before I left school. But I used to play in the under 14s, but I used to, used to put me out on the wing because I was so skinny, so small, but I used to have a bit of pace and a trick, which used to kind of get me out of jail sort of thing, but... Um, I played on the wing. I played down the middle one time. I tried to do my stuff, got kicked all over the place. So they just put me out on the wing. And I had all the room in the world there, just take them on and everything. And and I thought to myself, you know what? I could have a go at this lark. Because it was just all fun and games for me. Because I used to be a bit into everything. And I started to take it a bit more seriously because I thought, you no. Know, somebody said to me, you know, if you get your, get your head right and stop trying to take the piss all the time, and take it a bit serious, you could have a chance. Penny kind of dropped, really. And uh, from that, I just took it more serious. And then it was coming to the end of school, you know, having to think about careers and what have you. I was going to go in the army because four of my friends were all going to go in the I was going to go in the army. One was going to go in the police force. One was going to go in the Navy, the Air Force. So that's all we plan to do. But... I had a chance, I played for City Boys, and this guy uh, from Forest said, oh, he wanted to come down for a trial. I thought, right, okay. So that kind of swayed me a bit then. Went down to a trial, about 100 lads there. I'm thinking, oh, God, oh, God he's, he's a bit big, and God, he, well, he's got good boots. He must be a good player. You know, that's how we used to judge people then. If you had, like, the top boots and everything, because I didn't have very good boots, you see, but... Mm. You see somebody in good boots, you think it was a good player, but that wasn't the case. So, <laughs> yeah, I played a couple of games and I went past my fullback, crossed it, and then came back and they took me off. And I'm thinking, oh, I've only just played 10 minutes, but I did it like two or three times during those 10 minutes. Went past my fullback, crossed it, got back. And the ball came to me, I just took him on again, did the same thing, and they took me off. And I thought, oh, no, I'm never going to make it now. 10 minutes that's all they was looking for <laughs> then I just went to the next 
trial after that, and it just progressed from there. So. Yeah. <laughs> was everyone really supportive of the of you then get going for that career in in football? Because well, yeah. I've had footballers on before where they've said, "Oh, you know, kind of family went. Oh, I know you've got to get a proper career and stuff like that." Was everyone supportive? Yeah, my my my, my dad was. My mum wasn't. She wanted me to get a trade. Because them days people doing um, after apprentices in like electrician in mm. electricians and um, plumbers and you know all that type of thing. But I thought no, I'm gonna have a go. You know football. And my mum says oh, that's not a trade. And people break their legs and then they're finished and all that. So, but you know, I made my mind up. That's what I wanted to do. So mm. I had um, a situation where um, my teacher, my sports teacher. He was a Welshman and a big rugby fanatic. And he said to us, you know, all the guys and that, oh, so uh, what do you want to be, plumber, when you grow up? I said, I want to be a footballer, sir. And he went, huh, and I'm going to play rugby for Wales then, am I? And I thought, that really kind of hurt me. And I thought, you kid. <laughs> Little did he know, went through a trial and everything, got offered an apprenticeship at Forest. Because I played in one of their youth teams, you know, before I got when I, before I left school, and they offered me an apprenticeship. Myself, Steve Hodge, and a couple of other lads. And then when we left school, and then they announced it that we become apprentices. And this Welsh um, guy, Mr. Jones, we were playing against Swansea. Swansea was managed by John Tosha, and they were in the first division at the time. And uh, one of the receptionists called down to say, oh, there was somebody at the gate who wanted to see me. And it was only Mr. Jones, wasn't it? And I said, oh, plumber, I take my cap off to you, son. I never thought he had it in you. But then any chance of a couple of tickets? I said, oh. So are you playing rugby for Wales then, sir, are you? And, you know, so that was my little dig back at him so you never thought you knew I had the ability but it's just the heart and everything else that goes with it really mm. yeah uh, totally and that's obviously yeah. Nottingham Forest uh in like yeah. around that time and everything it's like iconic club isn't it you know and obviously clubs oh, in charge it's like a and and Steve Hodge I mean he's done all right out of that Maradona shirt yeah. hasn't he oh, <laughs> but God. you know it's like iconic isn't it to be it playing is. as part of that club Oh, I'll tell you what, Dave. Um, and we was there when when I was an apprentice there. That was when the sem we left school 79. So they we just won the European Cup. And then we were like in the midst of all that team, you know, getting the boots sorted for them and the kit and everything. So we were very much part of it. And you know, watching the games, seeing them training, and we were right, you know, hands on. It was brilliant. And oh, that's all you needed just to give you that inspiration to want to do something. You know, you think, yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to be in that that mold and that, you know. And to think that Cluffy used to think that we were good enough to play in his teams was, you know, a bonus within itself, you know. So, but yeah, at that time, with two fabulous years, mate, when, you know, they won the European Cup and he's doing all well in these other Europe trophies and doing well in the league. On forty odd games without defeat, it was a great time to be around the place, you know. Mm. So, not only that, but coming through the youth ranks as well, really good youth team. The, the club was buzzing, you know, with all the European stuff, and you could you went on a crest of a wave, and it was a really good feeling about the place, you know. So, yeah. it was great. Uh, terribly dangerous in front of goal or on the break. Not as dangerous as some sides we've seen here at Torquegate in the league this season. The 15th today, Torquay. And that's a quick ball in haste. One back from Ryan. Great ball to Plum. Here's a chance from Equalizer, certainly. Uh, well, call that fourth division. Not a chance. Calvin, my man. Whose boots were you, were you cleaning? I first, when I was in my first year as an apprentice, I did Viv Anderson's, Ian Bowyer's, uh, and this um, this other pro named Colin Smith, and then the second year, because I, I was did one year as an apprentice, and the second year I did uh, Frank Gray's, and then I be, signed my pro contract. So I wasn't cleaning boots after that. So yeah, it's, but no, it's brilliant. You know what? 
Thing to clean the changing rooms out, get all the kit ready, sweep the stands. You know, before we even touch the ball, because when we first went down to do um, our jobs and that, cleaning toilets, baths, everything, you know, just to give us a bit of grounding, hmm. you know, as if to say, because they had to do the same. When, yeah. you know, Viv Anderson was telling me he had to do the same, clean toilets and clean the baths out, do the boots, get the kit ready and just give you a bit of grounding. Whereas nowadays, mm. you know, you've got all these academies and so forth. And like, I mean, my first car was a 250 pound mini clubman. I know somebody who's play signed for, many times for Sheffield United. His first car, 19,000 pound Mercedes. <laughs> at, at that 17, 18. Wow. So that's Incredible, what I thought cup, you know what I mean? So, you are, you, are you glad though that you were playing then and not now or would you have preferred to have played now and not then well no i had my time then dave you have to live in the moment don't you yeah, so, yeah totally yeah so you know i was just happy to to play in the moment get the opportunity you know it, man it wasn't about the money it was just right. about the adulation and the, the feeling of doing something that you want you love and a lot of people wanted to do because a lot of people at my age and at my school wanted to be professional footballers and yeah, yeah. and I made it, you know, so it was real feather in the cap, mm. you know, to sacrifice quite a lot of things, you know, going out and stuff. I know I say going out, but I had to go to bed and get myself ready and yeah. it's all about preparation. Mm. You know, you don't if you don't prepare, you prepare to fail, if you know what yeah. I mean. So yeah, absolutely. So yeah. yeah. So yeah, it was it was worth it in the end, mate, trust me. Mm. And you end up coming to Chesterfield in nineteen eighty two, didn't you? Yes. Because at Forest at the time there were myself, Franz Carr, um Gary Crosby, I think. The three um wingers, so to speak. And I just wanted to play football, mate, because mm. you know I mean, I had this attitude of, yeah, I want to play in the first team. We're never going to, not quite there yet. I wanted to play in the reserves. The reserves are superb to get in that team because yeah, I used to play in a thing called the Central League and used to play against your likes of your Ian Rush at Liverpool. Man United used to play against players. You know, it was first team players who weren't quite in the squad or they were injured or coming back from injury, but the, the standard was really good, mm. excellent. I wanted to play, and I played up to 18, 19, really developed myself really well. And I had the attitude of, yeah, I don't want to be sitting on the bench and just watching the first team every week. I want to go out and play. So I had an opportunity to go and play first team football. Hmm. Regardless of where it was, I just wanted to play. And um, I think it was... Oh, who knew me? I think Frank, what's his name? Frank Barlow. Yeah, Frank, Frank Barlow. Barlow got in touch with somebody, just you know, just to get some players in, just to give him, you know, a helping hand. And I jumped at the chance when I was offered it because a lot of players are going out on loan then anyway. So, mm. yeah, it was a real eye opener for the fact that, I mean, he's playing in the fourth division, it's more physical, and obviously, you know. The lads were different, and it was just all about the football anyway. But it was a good environment, a good learning curve. You know, and I, when I went there, the guys were brilliant with me. You know, I didn't give it no big time. You can't really you're just learning, aren't you? So yeah, yeah. the lads were brilliant. Frank was brilliant. Billy Dearden, remember Billy? Billy was superb. Um, he taught me a lot as well. But Frank was superb with me as well. The whole experience was excellent. Mm. Honest, yeah, it's good. Did you ever did you ever have a conversation then with with Brian Clough about wanting to go out? Do you have to? Well, or, not or so much Brian Clough. It was um, Liam O'Kane. Hmm. It was Liam O'Kane. Um, we were talking about different things, you know, and talking about you know where you were in in the pecking order and development and so forth. And I said, well, if I had a chance to go out on loan, I, I would go. And you know, obviously. I must have thought, well, you know, you've got to be a bit ambitious, which yeah. I was. And, uh, you know, as much as I wanted to stay at Forest, but I wanted to play football. Mm. And, um, you know, it's always a good thing to go and play somewhere and get some more game time. And then I came back to Forest after that, and then it done me the world of good. Yeah, yeah. Most physically and just playing regularly, 
you know, and being part of a team environment. Although you were in the youth team when you was at Forest and that, but you're playing in proper men's league, if you know what I mean, more physical and, well, you know, with a bigger crowd than two or three hundred that you get at a reserve game. It's, you know, all the excitement was there. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Great, great learning curve. I actually had Danny Wilson on a few, mm. few weeks back and he was yeah. saying how when his transfer... With with was going to Forest because the club, Chesterfield had no money. Frank Barlow needed the money yesterday. I think was the was the quote. Um, and you came over, I think, with Steve Kendall, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, what happened was yeah because um, Steve Kendall. Um, I think it was just myself at first because I did hmm. all right in my in my um, loan period. And uh, when they were coming to watch me, because obviously Forrest has seen how I was developing and that, and I was doing all right, but yeah. Danny Wilson was superb. He was brilliant. Midfield general, up and down, great techniques, ability was superb. You could always tell he was going to kick on, and they saw him. And obviously, you know, Chesterfield were quite happy to take me as much as I was happy to go there. And Danny Wilson, obviously, it's a big step for him, so... You know, the deal was done. There was no, you know, I never thought, well, I'm never, I'm not making it now. Or it wasn't about that. I just wanted to play football, mm. you know, whichever level. I was only a young lad anyway. So I knew, you know, if I did well enough, I could get somewhere later on or whatever. Yeah, but just to play football, you have to live for the moment. And, yeah. and I did. And Chesterfield was the ideal club for me, just up the road. I knew the staff and the players and yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, I was going to say because when you came into Chesterfield, I think you played. You played like every game, didn't you? I think it was like yeah. twenty eight, twenty eight. The last twenty eight games of that season, you played yeah. all of them, didn't miss one. No, so you no. slotted straight into that team, didn't you? Under, under Frank in, yeah, but yeah. Frank played some really nice stuff because uh, Frank originally came back to Forest. He was a manager with um, Ian McParland at one stage at Forest. So Frank's ideas of playing football were superb. And he tried to integrate that within the fourth division, you know, set up because a lot of teams used to kick shit out of you, excuse my French, and, yeah. you know, just play the long ball. But Frank tried to play, tried to get it down, and it was really good. And that was like Cluffy's philosophy as well. So that's why, you know, I liked it. And mm. Frank was really good. Billy Dearden was the same as well. I always remember those two. Excellent, it was. I really enjoyed it. Really did. So, yeah. you know, and it was, Steve Kendall came in and we loved it because we both, you know, I felt all right because I know Steve, he's a great player as well and he really fitted in at the club as well. We both just slotted in nicely. Mm-hmm. Just makes things a lot easier for us. So, yeah, it's brilliant. Wilkinson. Oh, good flick by Glover and Wilkinson striding on, showing terrific pace. Good save, Wilkinson again. Plummer surely, yes. Forrester in the lead. Calvin Plummer scores, but Paul Wilkinson takes so much of the credit. That was a really beautifully constructed move. Wilkinson's pace there was almost frightening. Out came Peter Wells, blocked the first effort, but Calvin Plummer snaps up the rebound. I had a look at the fixtures when you first came in. So I think the first game was like a defeat to Huddersfield, I think. And we were obviously a bit bit near the bottom of the table. But then your mm. third game was a, a 3-1 home win against Sheffield United. So you had a nice oh, derby yeah. victory yes, just as, in your third game, which must have been must have been good fun when you get in, uh, getting used to a the new team. The crowd, I can remember, because the, the, they brought loads. It was at Saltergate, wasn't it? Mm, I think that yeah, was. yeah, yeah. They brought loads behind that goal. And it was oh, a great atmosphere. For a, a fourth division match, the atmosphere was superb because Chesterfield used to have quite a good following at Saltergate. Mm. And, uh, yeah, it was brilliant. And I always remember them talking about this Keith Edwards and some other players that they've got. And, oh, we absolutely pulverised them, mate. <laughs> you know, we went and we smashed them. And I think they were quite surprised because they didn't think that, you know, we were that good. But we had some brilliant players there, man. Mm. Uh, I'm thinking Sean O'Neill at the back. Yeah, yeah. Remember, um, John Turner's the goalkeeper. This is um, Henderson, Martin Henderson, big Scottish guy up front. Yeah, brilliant. It was really good. Mm. Excellent. Yeah, I've had a few players from that from that team mm. kind of on the podcast. Sean O'Neill's been on. 
Uh, Andy sure, Kowalski was on just a couple of weeks Kowalski, ago. Andy Kowalski, yeah. Andy, great midfielder, Andy. Yeah, very underrated, Andy. Very, very good player. Mm. In number ten, played the number 10 role. Yeah, Andy Kowalski, yeah, I remember. Great player. Yeah, there were some good lads here. Great yeah. lads. Your, your first goal for us was, I think, against uh, Newport County with a penalty. So you, you ended up... You ended up on uh, on kind of penalty duty, didn't you? Was is that something you're always? What what's the secret to taking a good penalty? Well, pick your spot and hit it as hard as you can, because sometimes you can, you know, if you send the goalie the wrong way, that's fine. But if they guess right and you don't hit it hard enough, you can parry it or it can, you know, it can hit him and not really go in. But just hit your spot. Don't change your mind. And that's all I used to do. Hit the spot. And if the goalie saved it and guessed the right way, there's not a lot you can do about it. I never used to be worried about missing. I think that's probably part of it. If you worry about missing, you're going to be like, oh. But no, no, I didn't. So Frank said, yeah, get on him, man. I didn't mind. Not a problem. <laughs> nice. And you scored like seven goals, didn't you, that season? So you seven in seven in 28. It's one in one yeah. in four. Good, good yeah. return. Well, well, the good thing was. When the ball used to come over, when I was at Forest, when the ball used to come over from the left side, I used to just be on the far post, just to have a gamble, really. Because mm. once I'm there, if it goes over my head, but I used to just time it, really, so I could always get in, rather than me getting too far enough to come out. So I kind of timed it well, and, you know, we had some... Uh, who was the left? I'm trying to think. Who was the left winger then, or the fullback called John Partridge, I think. To put some sweet left foot and Sean as well, mm. put some great balls in. If the strikers missed it, I used to come in and you know, some of them were tap ins, but some of them were you know, one on one. So, yeah, yeah, it was good. good. Yeah. I was Do never you... prolific at that mm. stage, but when I went back to Forest, I started playing me down the center, and you know, I got a few goals then, but yeah, you know, because I could run, they always thought I'd just play on the wing, but I kind of filled out a bit then, you see. So. Chesterfield mm. pies and stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you kind of, there's not as many out and out wingers in the game anymore, is there? No. Not Every, like it you, used to be. I used to love like used a to be, proper winger. It was like, well, now it's your wing back or, you know, you mm. play in a five. You know, back in the day, it was predominantly 4-4-2 four, four, or 4-3-3 three, three. he was in the top of the three or he was in a 4-4-2 four, four, no, you know, not many people played these 5-2-1s and what have you that was never heard of 4-4-2 yeah. four, two, four, four, two, or 4-3-3 four, three, three, basically but you know you had all the, a lot of the continental people coming in and changing the systems and what have you but yeah just used to play what you play so Frank used to like 4-4-2 four, four, you know so, yeah. yeah, I've always thought yeah. that, that the winger is like the position for the fans. Yeah, because oh. all the fans love a winger that can, like, say, he's got tricks, bit speed, can take people on, gamble oh, at the yeah. far post. Like you say, that's the position that is like the ultimate fan position. I think. Yes, definitely. Because I mean, my hero when I used was starting to come through was um, 1979. I'm talking about um, Laurie Cunningham. And you know, a black player played for Real Madrid, and oh, he was a different class. And I used to think I want to be like him, yeah. and because I could run a bit, but I just need to, you know, get crosses in and so forth and score some goals. And I wanted to be like him, and that's as close as I got. So yeah, and plus I could run a bit. That does help. But yeah, yeah. um, and to be honest though, uh, Dave. One thing what was really difficult at times was um, because some of the racism was really bad, you know, mate. Mm. It was horrendous, you know. And a young kid coming through, you have to have kind of thick skin because although they talk about it now, but at the time, we're talking late 70s, early 80s, it was still rife, mate, trust me. Mm. You know, when I played at Forest and played against Leeds and most of the teams up north, you know, Newcastles and Sunderland, Middlesbrough, it was horrendous. Playing on the wing as well. Yeah, yeah, you're right near the fans, aren't you? Right near the fans. And 
you know, the only time I really used to hear it was when the ball kind of went out of play. And I never heard it so much from the players. You know, it wasn't so much players, the fans. Mm. And plus the fact, when I used to take corners as well. But sometimes, mate, it used to be really, really bad. But, you know, you say you have to take it, you just get on with things you do. You have to kind of switch off because everybody was the same. I mean, it wasn't just a black thing. You know, it was a case of, say, you know, if I mean, I remember watching a game when Liverpool were playing and Stevie Gerrard went to take a, a corner and he used to put great corners in and they was giving him dogs abuse and I'm mm. thinking that. So it wasn't just a black thing, but obviously being that colour didn't help. So mm. I had a lot of adversity as well as, you know, trying to play and carry on. It was really, it was really difficult, mate. But, you know, Cloughy used to say, you know, you know, just carry on, you know, go and show him what you can do in that. And it did spur you on. So you have to have quite a thick skin, mate. Mm. Did you work on, like, how to... There must have been some ways you had, like... You shouldn't have to, but, like, coping mechanisms of how to how to kind um, of get through it. And Yeah, yeah. You, really you just have to, sometimes it used to spur you on. Mm. You know, if you're playing away from home... I mean, I've played at your Millwalls and your West Ham's and that. Horrendous, mate. But then... Mm. It was quite sad to see because there were black players on their side as well. And if they were doing all right, they, you know, obviously encourage them. But if they did something wrong or misplaced the pass, they'd hammer them, hammer them. But, you know, it was, yeah, it was a, there was a, you had to have the attitude of, yeah, I'll show you, you know, yeah. and, and that's, it worked. So, you yeah. Know. Okay. So at the end of the your season with Chesterfield, we obviously went down, didn't we? Uh, yeah, and you went to better. went to Derby, didn't you? Yes. Um, so it was a, I suppose it was a move that was a great stepping stone move for you, I suppose, wasn't it? Yeah, it was because Peter Taylor, Peter Taylor was my one of my bosses at Forest, and uh, there was himself and Brian Clough who thought he gave me my chance really when I was at Forest, and obviously he thought I was, you know. Felt good enough, and uh, I was quite pleased at that. And you know, it really gave me a boost because I mean, I didn't have to move house, it's just a 52 15 minutes up the road, sort of thing. Yeah, and he, you know, he said to me, Do you fancy coming? And you know, because John Robertson went at the same time, it was a time when him and Cluffy had a fallout, if you remember, mm, yeah, Robbo and Cluffy. And so I was quite happy with that because I knew Robbo, uh, one of the best players I've ever seen down at Forest. Um, and he was going there, so I was really pleased. I knew Archie, Archie Gemmell, um, from when he was at Forest, and um, who else on there? Paul Hooks, this guy who was at Notts County, so he's local lads. So we all used to travel in the same car, mm. so um, you know, and then I quite I really enjoyed it at Derby, although they had a few issues, you know, behind the scenes with the club and the hierarchy with paying wages and so forth. They never had no money for this. and it used to kind of spill into the dressing room where the morale was a bit low. But that aside, you played quite a few games for Derby. Hmm. You know, the, the crowd was superb. Because the ground, the, the baseball ground was really tight. Yeah. And, you know, you, you just take one step off the pitch and you virtually, you know, on the side. and So you could hear everything there. But they were very encouraging. Hmm. Even though I was from Forest, because I was a public enemy, you know, anybody from Forest used to hate it. <laughs> so, you know, but, you know, you, you used to get a bit of the bird sometimes if, you know, when the team was having a bad time. But once you were doing it and they saw that you were doing your best, they were really encouraging. So, hmm. you know, the same with Robbo. You know, Robbo was a great player. If he didn't do anything good, oh, King Forest, this, ooh, you know, and then, but when you were playing well, they were really behind you. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's brilliant, brilliant. And obviously, Chesterfield was the, the, uh, uh, played the baseball ground in the Damned United, yeah. didn't it? <laughs> we ended up painting it yeah. green. <laughs> yeah, and I, I went, I played for Chesterfield. We played against Derby in the Derbyshire Cup or something like mm. that. Yeah, Centenary Cup. Yeah, yeah, Centenary Cup. And we played there. And I think we got beat 2 0 or 2 1. We gave them a hell of a game because they had in Mick Harford's, Peter Shilton's, Mark Wright's. They had a right set players, loads, you know, big name players, as Robert Maxwell took over then and all the money came in and so forth. And we went there and played really well. 
you know, lost by two goals to one, but they won the cup. But it was really encouraging to see. So yeah, yeah, yeah the derby was good, but like um, obviously with the Forest fans because I still lived in Nottingham, <laughs> so I used to go out sometimes and see the other bit. Cheap shaggers, <laughs> you know, all good fun and that, but yeah, but it was my job. Yeah, so first and foremost, it was my job. So, well, and as a footballer, it's kind of nice to not have to go to the far end of the country, isn't it, to do your job? Yeah. You obviously managed oh. it quite well to start off, didn't you? Forest and then Chesterfield and then Derby and then Barnsley. Barnsley. You kind of stayed quite low, quite and then you close. end up in end up in Finland. <laughs> I went to Finland. Brilliant. Well, how that came about was, um. Myself, friends, Carl, Gary Crosby again. We were all playing in, with like in a circle, playing in the first team, reserves, first team, reserves, first. And you know, one of if one of us was injured, it was going to be first team or reserves and what have you. And I'm like, oh dear. So look on the sheet again. I was in the reserves because two of us used to play in the reserves, either myself and friends, mm. or myself and Gary. I've got in the first team a couple of times, but it wasn't a regular thing. So I spoke to um, the gaffer about it because, you know, I went to see him. I thought, well, oh, being brave here, yeah. because he, he must have thought, well, he must, I mean, he must have thought I'd come to see him about a contract of some kind. But I went to see him actually about going out on loan. Mm-hmm. And I think because I had the balls to do it, he was quite impressed with me going straight to see him instead of seeing one of the coaches. Yeah, so um, I said to him, Gaffer, I just want to play. You know, is there a possibility of me going on loan somewhere? I had a choice whether to go to Halifax Town because Mick, Mick Jones, remember Mick Jones? He used to be, mm-hmm. he passed away just recently. Yeah. yeah um, he was there and he was quite willing to take me. And I thought, well, yeah, you know, and I thought I had a good experience with Chesterfield. I thought, right, you know. And then um, an agent fellow phoned me up. I don't know how he got wind of me wanting to go on loan. And he said, oh, do you fancy going out to Finland for six months? I said, Finland? Oh, God. I thought, oh. And I knew somebody had gone out there. And I thought, yeah, well, I've got a girlfriend. And I've got no kids. And the thing, and I thought, ah, okay, not a lot to six months, you know, it's a nine month season, go out for six months and come back to Forest and then see how I go. And yeah. I thought, yeah, why not? Bit of an adventure. Brilliant. It was absolutely fabulous, mate. I'll tell you, one of the best things I ever did. Different culture. The football stadiums were unbelievable. The facilities were brilliant, but they just weren't professional enough at the time. Mm. So it was brilliant. So I went to play in this team in uh, uh, in a place called Lati, and it's right in the centre of Finland. And they had two teams in the like Forest and County in this particular area, and we were like the County, and the other team were Nottingham Forest sort of thing. So but, oh, it's brilliant. And we had a few different players. A guy from Wimbledon came. Um, and another guy from uh, Cambridge it was me from Forest, so there's three English lads there, so it was really good. It was a, mm. one of the best things I ever did, really. That kind of set me up nicely for six months. I was playing regularly, loved it. Although I didn't score many, but I played well, I was setting people up, and you know, so it really honing my skills. And so I was ready when I came back, I got straight back in the first team. Yeah, yeah. and it must just so, be nice just going abroad and having a taste of something completely oh, different for a bit. It was it absolutely brilliant, mate. It really was different culture, different type of playing, learning a new language, and you know, just a different lifestyle. And it's brilliant because we could come back for two weeks because they had a mid season break. We came back for two weeks mm-hmm. and then saw my family in that, and I went back again and uh, then went back in the October, came back in the October because it was their winter then because they used to play football in the summer because yeah, of the yeah. cold and that. But yeah, and then came back, started training again. Oh, I was on fire, you know. And you could see the difference in how much it picked me up and got in the first team. And then there was a, I got injured and I was out for or oh, ages for a while with the ankle, broken ankle and all, all sorts of stuff. And then when I came back, 
you know, it was brilliant again. So yeah, yeah. Finn Linda cool. went to to um, Derry in yeah. Ireland. I played in two semi final, two legged semi final and a final. Um, just just to get games, just to get a game. Um, it, it, honestly, it was brilliant. Two semi finals and we played against Dundalk and we got beat one 0 But just the experience alone mm. was, you know, it's brilliant. And like you say, if you just want to play, then I just want to play. Yeah, play anywhere, can't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah Universal yeah. language and all that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's great, mate. It's brilliant. This was one of those rare performances which should put another 4,000 on Saturday's gate if there's any justice left in football. It was a spectacular home debut for Argyle's new winger, Calvin Plummer, who signalled his intentions with this delightful scissor kick in the first half. But somewhat inevitably, Argyle's first goal came from the outstretched boot of veteran striker Tommy Tynan, after marker and McCarthy had failed to capitalise on Stoke's defensive panic. But it was Plummer who carved out the second with this classical wing play. The perfect cross into the centre, but what a finish from Tynan. So you came back to Chesterfield in 1989. So you had a, like a, what, six, seven years uh, away from us and then came back under Paul yeah. Hart. I think it was like 30 well, grand, I think we paid Plymouth for you, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I know. i tell you what, what happened was I seen Paul Hart in Nottingham and I was playing at Plymouth, and, and to be fair, when I went down there, the chance to go down was just to play second division. I, I, you know, I, they offered me a real good deal. You know, it was too good a deal to turn down, really. Mm. And I thought, well, you know what? Go and play. Although it's two or three hours down the motorway, you know, I had to obviously relocate. But, like I say, new start. So I thought, you know, I mean, Forest career, I played in the first team. I don't think I was going to get any further. So you just have to move on, you know. Yeah, and that's what yeah. I did. Went down to Plymouth. I really enjoyed it, but just to be homesick. I saw Paul Hart in this bar. And we used to go and have some food in there. I used to still see some of the Forest lads and that. He's just saying, how's, how's things? I says, all right, it's all right. But I just, I just miss home now. You know, he says, oh, say what? So, uh do you not like it? I said, well, no, I do not like it. I like, you know, the great, it's great atmosphere. The players are good. The manager's great. It's just a bit far. And he just said to me, oh, well, so, well, so would you be interested in coming back, coming up this way then? And I, I never thought about that. And I thought, well, <laughs> I suppose I would be, yeah. So I said, I mean, I've not got no beef or anything down there. It's just really good. I'm really enjoying it. And he just says, he says, oh, so, and he asked me, what your wages? What's your wages? And I told him, he said, oh, I can't do that. I said, well, that's why I went down there because, you know, it's too good to turn down and stuff. So, but then you have to put things into perspective and you think, well, you know what? In no way I'm going to get that to come up here, but you have to sacrifice something yeah. just to get, you know, and it wasn't about the money at that particular time. So, and then I think Paul Hart and Ken Brown, must have contacted each other because um, I think we played against Bristol City when I was at Plymouth and I'd done really well and I think one of the scouts from Chesterfield Dave Rushbury he came down to watch me just to give a, a and I had a good game that day so he must have gone back and told him said, yeah, it's worth taking a chance on him next thing I know I had a phone call, you know, and I went back up, went to, because I lived in Nottingham still, went up to Nottingham at the weekend, and uh, Ken Brown says, oh, while you're up there, you can go and pop in and see Paul Hart, and I said, all right, okay then. <laughs> so <laughs> I went chat. to see, yeah, so I had a chat, and I had a chat, and yeah, the deal was done. But then, at first, I, I said, yeah, okay, everything's fine. I shook hands on it. And then I went home and I thought, oh, no, no, I don't think that's right. And I phoned Paul Hart and I said, oh, Paul, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't know if I want to do it. And he went mad. <laughs> you what? Because he was like a great guy, but oh, he's a big chap as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And he said, you what? Fucking a load of fucking uh. And I'm like, oh, no. I said, yeah. And then I left it. Then I phoned him back again. I said, yeah, all right. Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> so you kind of put the fear of God in me. But I was a bit apprehensive. So, you know, lost a bit of money in it, but mm. it was about the playing, the football for yeah, me. Yeah. And you played all but all but two league games, I think, that season. I think you played 44, I think. I think, so. I think you missed two. Yeah. I, yeah, I was never injured. I think I missed two. How did I miss two? Yeah, I got injured probably twice or something like that. Yeah. I, I'd, I never used to get injured to play most games and that. I played most of the time and, you know, it was brilliant. Apart from me being at Forest, which was the pinnacle of my career, I would say Chesterfield is the best place where I've played football, especially the second time, and enjoyed it as much as I did when I started out because Paul Hard made that place. He made it such a, a pleasure to be around. You know, with the facilities we had, we had to go to a couple of different schools to train on the pitches and that, but his philosophy and the way I had things done, it was really top-notch, it was. I mean, the players, Dave Waller, different class. I was going to say, the, one one of the games you missed was that Halifax 4-3, where he scored that amazing goal, where he, yeah. where he cut in, which is one of my favourite goals of all time. Yeah, <laughs> it's brilliant. The pitch was a bit... Oh. Well, most pitches them days were weren't the best, but his the pitch at to Saltergate when it had a bit of rain on it. Oh, but we had such good players, you know. We could all in the middle there. We had great players. We started to get people like um, uh, what's that? Jack Lemon, Paul Lemon, Lee Lee Turnbull, Troy, who used to call him, and Dave Waller was brilliant. I mean, Gunny, um, Tony Bryan. Mm-hmm. Those type of Mick Leonard was in goal because myself, Mick Leonard, Sean Dyche, and Bryn Gunn, we all used to travel up at the same uh, oh, from Nottingham. Yeah. So that was our little school. We had a Nottingham squad, <laughs> then we had the Manchester squad, which was John Ryan, um, John Cook. There's a couple of people from Manchester and that. And then you had your yeah, Sheffield, like Doncaster lads, like Lee Turnbull, Lee Rogers. Oh, yeah. You know, so, and yeah, so, yeah, it, brilliant. You know what? The, the lads were absolutely different class. Um, and Paul Hart was, I'd say, one of the best coaches I've ever worked with. Mm. For, you know, he's, he's, you know, although he's a centre half, but he had everything else covered, you know, how he wanted the forwards to play. And we tried to play in that league how he got learned from, from Cluffy. Yeah. Cluffy told him, you know, to get it down, do this, do that. And he, he tried to play brilliantly. It really was mm. excellent. And we, at one point that season, I think we were up to third, I think, at one point, And then it kind of. Dr- Dropped a yeah. bit for the last few games and obviously ended up in the playoffs. Yeah, and then we that's... flying. Yeah. yeah, you got to. It's all about consistency. We were flying. I think we won about four or five on the bounce. Never conceded many, and then all of a sudden, you know, we had a loss here, a draw there. You know, I think we thought, oh, you know, we've done enough, but you haven't. And hmm. I remember we played Grimsby. Grimsby were right up there. And we absolutely played them off the park and we beat them, although they'd already gone up, I think. And then we got into the playoffs and that. And, oh, and that was brilliant because, you know, because they started playing me down the middle with big Andy Bruno, big Andy, mm-hmm. Andy, yeah, Morris. Andy Morris. Yeah. So, you know, because although I was really small, I had quite a good spring. I could get up quite well, you see. And all I used to do was me, me and uh, Andy... He used to take all the hits and that. And I used to pick up the pieces and that all. He used, to, he used to go short, flick them on. And I used to go for the second ball, which it worked really well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we had a really good combination. You know, the gaffer used to work with us all. And we all knew what we were doing. And um, I would say, I mean, to score a hat-trick in any game is enough. But because I scored a... Uh, well, the perfect hat trick, as they say, right foot, left foot header mm. in a game of such importance as that it was like well, the pinnacle of my career. I mean, to get to Wembley, that was a, a dream come true to play yeah. at Wembley, the old Wembley. So, you know, a bit of dreamland, really. Chesterfield now look odds on to make the Wembley playoff finals thanks largely to a hat trick from Calvin Plummer. He struck first in the 38th minute. Then, on the stroke of half-time, he popped up for number two. 
After the break, a neat build-up, and there was Plummer again to complete a memorable hat-trick. Finally, a long free kick, a touch on in the box, and there was John Ryan to make it Chesterfield 4, Stockport County 0. There was always a sense that after their 4-0 win on Sunday, all Chesterfield had to do was turn up to qualify for Wembley. And after Bryn Gunn survived what looked like a blatant handball, it was clear Lady Luck was with them. When the luck looked like running out, Mick Leonard was equal to Stockport's best. But if anyone was going to score, it was perhaps inevitably Calvin Plummer, who plundered a hat-trick on Sunday. But credit for this goal to John Ryan, who robs Brown, and Plummer makes life look easy. Now, there's never a bad time to score a goal, but if you've been waiting five years, a strike on target must be like manna from heaven. So imagine John Chidozzi's relief as he breaks what must have been one of the longest barren spells ever for a striker. Well, I thought we were absolutely super. Real professional job, and, well, we played ever so well. Uh, I'm delighted. Proud of him. I think it was when I had Lee Francis on, I think, when he was saying, like, as a playoff game, he was like, yeah. it was quite easy. <laughs> yeah, <that> was <laughs> like, not easy, but, like, not what you expect from a playoff to, to kind of... But you scored four goals, didn't you, over those two? Yeah, legs? yeah, because, well, we played really well because Stockport were a really good side, really physical, and they tried to kick us off the play part, but we flipping played around them and we absolutely murdered them. Every chance we had, we scored virtually. And, you know, to get a hat-trick, mate. Oh, man, scored a couple of hat-tricks when I played in the reserves at Forest and what have you. I've never scored a hat-trick in a proper league game. I scored a couple of twos, but never a hat-trick. And to score a hat-trick in that type of game, of that importance, was, you know, unbelievable. That's one of the best feelings I've had, you know. Yeah. You know, we went in a dressing room afterwards and then, you know, the gaffer was just like keeping our feet on the ground. You know, well done, lads. Played brilliant, just like I said. But we've got another leg to go. We've got to play again on the Tuesday. Get the job done, you know. And then we went there and we flipping smashed them again. I scored again. It's a dreamland. <laughs> Honestly, Dave, you know, you, you couldn't make it up, mate. And and then we used to have a really good sing song. Because mm. I used to be on that mic, you see. I used to do a little bit of singing. I had all the lads behind me. <laughs> So I don't know if you ask any of the boys about it. it. used to get them all singing certain songs. Brilliant. It what was. would you be singing? Oh, there was a song called Minnie the Moocher by Cab Calloway. And what else? We used to sing, uh, yeah, Minnie the Moocher it was. You ask any of the lads. <laughs> Minnie the Moocher. And Paul Hart used to love it. And it used to just get all the lads singing behind me and that. And, oh, <laughs> Camaraderie was different class, man. You ask anybody who's in amongst that. It's... Hey, folks, here's this story about Minnie the Moocher. She was a low-down, huge coochie. She was the roughest, toughest, frail. Minnie had a heart as big as a whale. Heidi, 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 ho! Heidi, 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 ho! Have you still got the that match ball somewhere? I have, I have. Or anything like yeah, that? yeah, yeah. All the all the signatures are off it now. It's a might and max play, might. Well, it's gone down now, but yeah, yeah. Still got it. Still got it, mate. Oh, brilliant! It needs to go in the yeah. Chesterfield Museum one day or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. then, the chance to play at Wembley. Then, obviously, oh, amazing to play at Wembley. Amazing, mate. It's a, just uh, the build up. To it. I mean, once we knew we got there, because in the second game when we played at uh, Stockport, loads of fans we brought loads, and it was all behind this particular goal. And I scored in the goal that all our fans were. So can you imagine? You know, it's oh, brilliant, and that's that's one of the greatest feelings. Just to know that we're going to Wembley, and the build up with all the press coming up to Saltergate, and you know, and everything. It's really nice. You know, it's like you see on the telly when. You know, when people have the FA Cup build up and that, that was the same for us, you know, because mm. some of the guys hadn't experienced that before. And yeah. it was really good, you know. Paul Hart is brilliant, Chris McMenemy and Dave Grush, great, great little team. 
you know, we had a really nice balance of, you know, work, you know, working hard and playing hard and in downtime, hmm. the balance was superb. You know, nobody took liberties. Everybody was on it when we were on it. But when we were on that downtime one, you know, everybody was involved. So they got the, the balance just right. You hmm. know, and uh, at that time, I thought we could have beat anybody anybody at that time and obviously went to Wembley the day the build up was superb you know the occasion and the sun was out fans were there there was no excuse not to play well and we did play well but the thing is Dave I had three chances right mate hmm. one over the bar one the keeper saved and one I put on the other side and you know if there was a chance a time that I wanted to score was then yeah, totally. So, uh, I did it before, you know, because Artie said to me, like, because I said to him, I apologised to him. I said, Stuff, I'm so sorry. And he said, but listen, mate, we got here. We wouldn't have got here if it wasn't for you in the, you know, the semi-finals and that. So that made me feel better. But you still want to do your best and, you know, finish on top. But unfortunately, we lost 1-0. Dion Dublin had one header. Bring Gunn let him out of his pocket. One Split second, and then he got a move to flipping Man United. Yeah, didn't he? After that, Million and he's on pounds. TV all the time, so TV. it's like you get a reminder all the time. Oh, I see him, I think, flipping and look at him he's on bloody houses, on does it? Homes on the <laughs> hammer, and oh, but a good lad, though, as well. But you know, at the end of the day, fine margins, Dave, fine margins. You know, and you've had a connected with one of them. If we, I'd have scored one, I'd have got another hat trick, I tell you now, mate. I tell you, but that's how it rolls, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you get that look, and some days you don't. But yeah. Yeah. and last thing on Chesterfield, obviously the season after we got to the yeah. playoff final, um, yes. obviously Paul Hart went. Christmas Manami took over. Uh, yeah. It's kind of difficult for any club, isn't it, after you've been in a playoff final to then kind of go again. Oh. But oh, you scored yeah. in your last couple of appearances for you, didn't you? I think it was Doncaster yeah. and Peterborough, I think. Peterborough, yeah. You know, yeah. Last couple of games with us. So it was obviously a bit disjointed, wasn't it, that second season, I suppose. Uh, quite a bit up there was, again. Mate. but it, it was. It was really difficult. I mean, we kind of hit our peak when we got to Wembley, I would say. And then anything after that was always going to be a bit of a anti-climax if you know what I mean but um, you know what we just got wanted to get the season out of the way and then try and build again but then the management left and everything was just you know turned upside down and but you know what I mean all the time the two seasons that well the two times that I've had there three times actually mm. different gravy mate brilliant I, I really really enjoyed i've not been back to the new ground actually but I've, i really enjoyed it the lads the team the town you know it's brilliant brilliant and and the fans made me feel really welcome you know yeah. it was really nice and i'd like to think that i gave them a little bit back as well so yeah so, yeah you know, absolutely but, well you'll have to get back up to the new ground up to the new ground sometime it's sure it'll be yeah. uh, the, the yeah, loads yeah. of people that have got good memories about you, you'll just hear the word Stockport so many times. Stockport, <laughs> yeah. I tell you, mate, yeah, I tell you, I really, it was a dream come true, Dave, because you know, we all played really well, the lads did, and but just actually score a hat trick of such you know magnitude for me mm. in such an important game will stay with me forever, yeah, you know, Absolutely. so. But yeah, it's brilliant, mate. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant club, brilliant people. Always look out for the results, even though when they played against Notts County down here, I went down. Mm. So, and then myself and Bryn Gunn, you know, still good mates. We still go out and go for a drink and play squash and all that, go golfing. So, you know, we always talk about the days. You know, so he'd be a good man to get on as well, actually. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, you'll have to put me in touch. Yeah. Yeah, I will do. I will do. Yeah. And, and last thing, I, I was watching on YouTube today, I was watching you playing in some Masters football. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was Forest against, Forest against Wednesday. There were some yeah. good players in that in those teams. Brilliant. There was Hodge there, weren't there? You were there. Chris Waddle yeah. was there. there was, it was a... It was good fun. I was, I was, I only went brilliant. on to watch a few minutes of it, and then I ended up watching it all. It was just oh, so no, much fun. brilliant. We played, we won it, uh, two thousand, I think it was. We played two thousand in two thousand and one, 
And when they first did it, uh, we won it the first year against Rangers, playing against Ali McCoist and that in the final. Yeah. And that, that was an experience because some of the guys, right, Dave, you know, we played against David Speedy at Coventry, John Barnes, Liverpool, Ian Wright, Arsenal, we played against some proper big gunners, big hitters. And uh, you still think, you know, you still think you got a bit. You do, although we were really good. But, you know, some people aren't as quick as they are and they've got old scores to settle. Yeah. Because <laughs> I remember David Speedy, flipping a great lad. I know him, was superb, but he played for Liverpool. And he went over the top on somebody and he said, yeah, I remember you, you bastard. Yeah, when I was at Cov. Yeah, in 1987. So, yeah, you know. And they're like, what? And, you know, people had still had scores to settle, David. Yeah. It's unbelievable. But... There, was a, there was a scene in that in that, in that that match where I think it was Steve Hodge and Chris Waddle both went in for a tackle yeah. and kind of squared up to each other afterwards. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Still, the, the competitiveness never goes oh, away, does it? Never, never goes the first thing that goes, if anything, is your pace. Because what I found out was that you know, I could run and I was really quick. And then after a sudden, after a bit, as I tell you about this, Dave, sorry, hmm. I had a couple of heart attacks, mate. Did you? I've had, I had five heart attacks wow. within a 14-year period. I inherited a condition from my father. I've, had, hmm. I've got three stents. So, you know what? That's why... Every day is a blessing for me, mate, because mm -hmm. I had to go under the, the to do the defibrillator twice. So you know, so while I'm still here, I'm thinking, well, you know what? I did what I did. I played where I played. I played as, as high as I could go. Played it for as long as I could. So that's why I'm really blessed to think. Well, you know what? Some people didn't have that opportunity, mm -hmm. and I did. So. But you know what, mate? And then I've seen players falling and dropping down on the pitch with heart attacks. I've seen that Christian Eriksen, yeah, he yeah. fell. Fabrice Mwamba, Mwamba he, you know, yeah. there's quite a few. So, yeah, I just inhale. And I was fit, Dave. Don't drink. Just have the odd drink, but I never smoked. Mm. I was reasonably fit. Because when we used to do all the stuff that Arty used to get us to do, I was right up there in the rankings when it comes to times and stuff. So... It wasn't about my fitness, but yeah. you know. So yeah, but I suppose if anything, your your fitness probably helped, did it? Yeah. In terms yes. of you know, yeah. saving right. saving your saving life, saving life. Yeah. It, yeah, very much so, mate. Because you know, it was a case of like, I just felt this pins and needles in my arm, Dave. And I thought, what's that all about? And the next thing I know, my chest was really tight, and you know, it was oh, I couldn't breathe. And every time when I had a, I had a couple of heart attacks, I phoned, I was on my own, and I phoned the 999, it came out straight away, went in the ambulance, and I just felt, you know, like, oh, I just wanted to go to sleep. And I went under for 16 seconds, the, the paramedic said, and then they did the defibrillator, and I came round, as if somebody tickled the bottom of my feet. I'm like, where the hell, what's that all about? And I went in, I had two stents put in, so during that time, 10 years later, Dave, I was okay. Started playing golf, playing football again. Um, what was it? Uh, with the vets and all that, forest. And that was all right. I felt great. And then it happened again. And I had another, you know, I had to get back to defibrillate. I was out for eight seconds this time, they said. So I just felt like I just, you know, I just felt nice and warm. And I just thought, oh, this is nice. And then next thing I know, see this paramedic in my face. And then she said, I went under. So scary shit, mate. Scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was lucky to come through it. So, yeah. So I'm a bit blessed in that department, pal. So, like you say, it must it must give you a new yeah. appreciation of life. If Very much so, pal. Yeah. You know, you look at things so differently. And, you know, you, you, you just think, well, you know what? <sighs> You know, you look at things different. You don't take things too seriously. And you do appreciate things more. And you think to yourself, well, I, I'm not going to let that worry me, mm. you know, because I, I work in housing now. I've done that for the last 21 years. And, you know, trying to get people different council tenancies and what have you. When some people come in and they're really desperate and they start firing off at you and that, and, you know, you just let them say what they've got to say. And then you catch them on the way down. And then I just have a different 
you know, outlook on things and, mm. you know, so, yeah. And it's done me good, really, yeah. in that respect, because I appreciate things more and, you know, the opportunities I've had. And like I say, it's been a pleasure to be talking about Chesterfield because that was a big part of my life, especially my football life. I mean, I was a 12, 12 years as a pro, so at least three years out of that, belong to Chesterfield, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. It's brilliant, mate. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming on and having a chat. It's been so so yeah, much fun. It's been a pleasure, Dave. Thank you for having me, mate.